Does the soul really exist? Is there an essential self separate from the body that persists even after death? Humanity has always sought answers through faith, science, and philosophy. Although we try not to think about it, at some point in our lives we all experience existential anxiety about what will become of us when we die. Does nothingness await us? Are we just passing through? Do we reincarnate? Or is there eternal existence? This topic is fascinating, and there's much to explore. What if we've been wrong all this time? What if our individual essence is much more complex than what we've been told? It's time to get to the bottom of this question with scientific answers and surprising conclusions. What follows could be the most fascinating insight on this topic. The soul, according to some philosophies and many religions, is the immaterial part of human beings that defines our identity. In most theological beliefs, the soul is something like an immortal essence that survives physical death and connects the person with God. In philosophy, it's considered the essence or identity of a person and is more closely related to consciousness. Plato defined the soul as the immortal and pure part of a person that existed before the body. Aristotle, on the other hand, saw it as the vital principle of any living being. Put more simply, the body would be the vehicle, the avatar, very similar to that of a video game, that automatically performs biological processes, and the soul would be the part that commands the body, that supposed avatar, the part that feels and is conscious at all times. What does science say about this? Is it true that the soul exists? Are we avatars that remain conscious beyond death? Is there continuity? Where do we go? Science works to measure and understand the brain and to determine if a soul exists beyond it. The most advanced studies in cosmology and particle physics have given us some intriguing solutions. From a neuroscientific approach, the brain is seen as the center of human experience. Neural activity, especially in regions like the frontal parietal lobe and limbic system, is considered essential for self-perception and the sense of continuity we associate with our identity. This means that, from a logical perspective, everything we feel and everything that defines us is in the brain. If the brain dies, nothing survives beyond the body since we are no longer conscious of our identity. However, there are such intriguing phenomena at the moment of death that this gives us indications that there is something beyond physical death. In 1907, physician Duncan McDougall conducted an experiment that sought to measure the weight of the soul. He used six dying patients and weighed their bodies just before and after death. McDougall reported that, on average, the bodies lost approximately 21 grams immediately after death. Is this weight loss after death related to the existence of the soul? The scientific community has weighed in, telling us it's due to the loss of gases and fluids at the moment of death. Is this a convincing explanation? When a person's heart stops beating, they experience what is called clinical death, but not total death. The brain continues functioning for a time, and it's during this period that some individuals report extraordinary cases, what are called near-death experiences. In these cases, some people have reported sensations of leaving their bodies or perceiving an intense light, or even hearing conversations from another room. Science tells us that brain activity can continue in certain areas of the brain even after the heart has stopped beating. In near-death experiences, spikes in brain activity have been recorded on the electroencephalogram just before or after cardiac arrest, which may coincide with the person's subjective experience. A recent study by the AWARE research group has observed this phenomenon in patients who have gone through cardiac arrests. In its latest version, the study suggests that up to 10 to 20 percent of these patients remember lucid experiences that defy the minimal brain activity present. Some theories in alternative medicine suggest that humans have energy fields and that when the body dies, there should be a measurable energy field that emerges. Until now, we haven't detected any energy field or other process leaving a body at death, so all studies have concentrated on studying consciousness and our brain. We believe that's where the key lies and that it could follow undetectable processes. If our body, like our brain, is made up of atoms and particles, doesn't it make sense to believe that neurological and conscious processes are related to quantum physics and that information persists beyond? The following might be the definitive explanation for the existence of the soul and whether there is something of us that survives consciously. One of the fundamental principles in quantum information theory is that information is not destroyed, but transformed. We see energy transformations everywhere in the cosmos. The energy present in nebulae becomes stars and partly planets. 
Much of the elements from stars and their supernova explosions combine into particles to form heavier elements and complex structures like ourselves. Those stars didn't completely die, we are part of them. A death that is really a transformation in the form of elements and dispersed energy to form new stars, new life, new complex processes. That's why we are children of the stars. We are material that has been recycled many times and transformed. Information is transmitted in every part of the universe. If each immaterial or biological body disappeared forever, information would be destroyed and the cosmos would not exist. Information must exist for the great cosmic machinery to keep functioning. And that's why some researchers in quantum physics explore the possibility that quantum information is involved in consciousness. Theoretical studies in quantum mechanics, such as Carlo Rovelli's relational quantum theory, suggest that the information from system interactions could be preserved, indicating that information states may persist in the universe. In the context of consciousness and the soul, some have interpreted this to mean that this information could remain in the universe after the physical death of the brain. However, the consensus in quantum physics is that the persistence of information does not equate to conscious continuity or a personal soul. Dr. Stuart Hameroff and Sir Roger Penrose have been working since 1996 on a quantum theory of consciousness. According to them, there exists a soul that is contained in structures called microtubules housed in brain cells. The idea is that the brain is like a biological computer with 100 trillion neurons, and in these connections between each one are information networks. They call this connection orchestrated objective reduction. Stuart Hameroff argues that microtubules are crucial for consciousness. These are cylindrical structures that help give shape and support to cells. This theory suggests that microtubules can act as quantum computers that process information at the subatomic level. In quantum physics, particles are in superposition of states. They are waves or particles, depending on how you observe them. There is always a collapse into one state or another. How does this relate to consciousness? Very simply. The word orchestrated suggests that this choice is not random. It's influenced by what happens in your brain and your experiences. So in the context of consciousness, they propose that when our brain processes information, such as making decisions or having thoughts, this reduction is guided by how neurons are organized and how they interact with each other. So our consciousness could be a quantum process that allows our brain to handle and decide between multiple possibilities efficiently and in an orchestrated way collapsing into one of the states. What we experience in the conscious state is nothing more than a wave collapse of the quantum information of the mind. Multiple possibilities become a single conscious experience or decision. Understanding this process can be somewhat frightening because if these scientists are right, we could create consciousness in artificial intelligence as if we were giving it a soul. Currently, Artificial systems only work with algorithms and data patterns, but they lack subjective experience and the ability to have emotions, intuitions, and experiences of the self because they don't emulate the supposed quantum information of the brain. If we wanted to create consciousness, it would be necessary to incorporate quantum processing elements. This would involve developing systems that could replicate the quantum interactions that occur in human brain microtubules. The development of quantum computers might bring us closer to creating artificial consciousness, and this can be as amazing as it is terrifying. However, what we're interested in knowing is whether this quantum information can exist outside the body indefinitely as a soul. Our body is made up of countless subatomic particles and isn't outside the universe but is contained in an ocean of quantum fields. There are subatomic particles with which we continuously interact, governed by cosmic laws. Just as a fish depends on water to live, humans and all matter depend on the quantum framework that shapes nature. Right now, one of the most important energy fields in the universe is the Higgs field, and we are immersed in it. This field gives mass to particles. If the Higgs field didn't exist, electrons, which are essential for the formation of atoms, would have no mass and couldn't remain in orbit around atomic nuclei. This would mean that atoms couldn't form, which means that matter as we know it, including all life, would not exist, we would disintegrate. Therefore, there is a constant connection with the cosmos in these fields. If we are continuously connected with quantum fields, part of our information must be contained somewhere. Hameroff believes that if a body is resuscitated, this quantum information can return to the microtubules. It's important to note that if the brain has been without oxygen for more than six minutes, 
it's already severely damaged and practically impossible to recover. Some people who have been resuscitated show signs of changes in personality and cognitive ability. This indicates that the recovery process can lead to a different version of yourself and that we depend on our brain. In the universe, everything tends toward disorder and entropy. A living being is continuously fighting against entropy and maintains itself with external energy inputs. When we die, all of this dissipates in one way or another. The total energy of a system is maintained, but the order that existed disappears. The information from that complex system has become disordered, but integrates into space to create other bodies. That information, when dispersed, is too subtle to be captured by our instruments. We would need more than a portable particle accelerator to see how quantum mental information is distributed in space. So, we should define the soul not as an individual conscious entity, but as information constituted by quantum fields. The answer to humanity's great question is that it's very likely there isn't a personified soul as described in many beliefs and religions. We must definitively remove humans from being the center of creation and the human soul. We may be more intelligent and conscious than a dog or a chimpanzee, but that doesn't give us exclusive rights to possess an eternal human soul. And science is clear about this. When there is absolute brain death, there is no consciousness to process that information. And everything we were, with our good or bad memories, disappears, but part of the information of what we were is transmitted to the quantum network of space-time. We will no longer be conscious, our elements will continue the chemical cycle of the universe, but forming part of systems different from what we were when we were alive, both organic and inorganic. The combination of electromagnetism and chemistry that gave us the sensation of self will never again form in the exact configuration we had at death. And it's possible that due to random factors, given the great amount of time in humans, someday there might exist a human who resembles us greatly. But apart from that coincidence of sharing similar genetic traits, even being a genetic copy, something improbable but not impossible, and even a similar mentality, they will have no connection to us. This, although it may seem sad, is something beautiful and wonderful. We are eternal energy that transforms, and at this moment, we are unique and special along with all the energies of other millions of deceased humans, including their wisdom and experiences. So let's transmit knowledge, learn, and renew ourselves. This universal rule applies to everything, both in life and in what they call death. The cycle of the great cosmic machinery prevents stagnation. We can be infinity of things in the universe, among the stars. One day the sky will call us again. We will fly ever higher, but this time not as humans and we will reach new heights. If we could look back, we would see that we have been in every tree, in every star, every human being, and that we are part of an eternal whole.